evening and welcome to the government news brief for Wednesday, May 25, 2016. In the news, more unity being forged in hinterland communities, sports returning to the school's curriculum, and one more day to go for Ghana's 50th independence. I am Sunika Thorne. Stay tuned for the details. Thank you for staying with us. This is the government news brief. Here are the details. Canada is assisting the government with the creation of action plans to guide the nine local municipalities' development. Here is that report. The Ministry of Communities, working in conjunction with the Caribbean Local Economic Development, CARI-LED, is supporting the councils in the development of these plans. Minister of Communities Ronald Bulkan explains that what the ministry and the Canadian-funded CARI-LED did was to revise plans for the town's development. What CARI-LED would have done in conjunction with the ministry uh, was to pick up the pieces that was actually a process that had actually started way back as 2000 under the Urban Rehabilitation Program where action plans they were being developed for the management of our municipalities and um, again unfortunately uh, I think it would not be unfair for me to say as a result of the lack of political will to allow our local councils to be able to have that responsibility for managing those their respective areas mm -hmm. um, those plans were never operationalized plans were completed for the municipalities of Rose Hall Corriverton New Amsterdam Linden and Georgetown Minister Bulkan explains that the revision of these plans began in late 2015. Now that the new councils are in place and at these municipalities, Minister Bulkan says that these plans will again be reviewed. Whilst this process um, would have taken place during the um, latter part of last year mm -hmm. and early this year, uh, it is the new councils that have come into being following the, the recent elections, elections that they are the ones who would have to take ownership and therefore they are now actively reviewing those plans with a process of determining um, what Aspects they will re they retain mm -hmm. and what they might refine and what is not appropriate for immediate implementation. With regards to the three recently formed new municipalities of Letem, Mabaruma and Bartika, Minister Bulkan explains that they will now start the process of creating their own action plans. Bartika already has a base document which is the Green Bartika Plan. Uh -huh. Which has been, uh, which probably you are aware of, and I think um, many of, that you, of your viewers. That is Bartica is supposed to be our first green uh, town. Has been identified as yes. our first green town, and the Bartica, uh, the green Bartica plan, will be used um, to develop a wider plan uh, as part of their uh, action plan mm -hmm. for for the new township. The action plans for the municipalities address infrastructure and institutional needs. Once completed and adopted, these plans will lead to the sustainable management of the town's affairs and their development. Politically divided communities in the hinterland were among the many challenges that government faced when it took office in 2015. One year on, this situation has changed. Find out how in this report. Minister of Indigenous Peoples Affairs Sidney Alicock says that one of his main objectives was to bring the people together especially the main players, to address the many issues affecting the indigenous population. My first plan was to get the people together, the, the various players in the development of the indigenous peoples and the, the country as a whole. So it's like a game, I think. It's like the game of football. If you have a good team, you score the goals. And that was the driving force behind my imagination of how we could overcome the many issues that the indigenous peoples face in Guyana today. Minister Alicock noted that for communities to move forward, residents have to work together. The communities, as I came to meet them and I've experienced this, were divided politically. And while we have had the 50 years of political independence, we should have already been able to have economic independence in communities. So we would not have been in a state of wanting and doing, not, not knowing what to do, but to use the imagination and the creativity that the indigenous peoples have. 
Meanwhile, communities continue to receive support through the annual presidential grant and community development projects fund. Support is also being provided in the form of transportation for agriculture, health, and education. Several communities have also benefited from startup funds for income-generating projects in commemoration of Guyana's 50th independence anniversary. For the government news brief, Seneca Thorne reporting. Guyana is expected to play a critical role in an upcoming conference in Papua New Guinea. Find out how in this Glen and Greenwich report. Guyana is set to make important inputs on the future of the African, Caribbean and Pacific ACP group of states and the group's relations with the European Union at the 8th Summit of Heads of State and Government. The summit is scheduled from May 30 to June 1, says Minister of Foreign Affairs Carl Greenwich. This is a very important event which is taking place at an important time uh, in the history of the ACP. And uh, the future of the ACP in terms of where it goes after the expiration of the Cotonou Agreement in 2020 is an important, it's a fundamental issue. And the flow and consequences of that and what the ACP group will stand together uh, moving forward uh, is, a, is, is, a, is, a, is a legacy creation. Guyana's Minister of Foreign Affairs says that as founding member of the grouping, it is appropriate to lend energies and ideas looking ahead as the group's future is being reviewed. For us, in fact, the greatest challenge is what exactly is the role of the Caribbean? Where is the Caribbean going? How integrated a region will it be? What does it want? And uh, we have to be careful to ensure that we can articulate that properly and to um, stress the importance of the group as a whole to Guyana and their intentions as regards the European Union. The ACP group comprises 79 African, Caribbean and the Pacific states, signatories to the ACP-EU partnership agreement, binding them to the European Union. There are advantages and a lot of those advantages are a result of the spe special mechanisms we put in place and the partnership we have with the ACP that allows small countries to have a voice in the final decisions of such a large group. The group was created to coordinate cooperation between its members and the European Union. However, over the years, the range of activities has expanded to cover a variety of fields spanning trade, economics, politics and the culture in diverse international fora such as the World Trade Organization. With this government news brief, I am Glendon Greenwich. Recently, sports in Guyana has been doing exceptionally well on the regional and international levels. Government's intention is to have this to spill off into the school system. Details in this report. More steps are being made to encourage sports in schools, Director of Sports Christopher Jones says. The plan of the National Sports Commission and the Department of Sport is to encourage the associations to put together um, a, a template, so to speak, a, a program in which we can see rolling out for the next five years in the school system. And once they could make that submission to us, we will uh, rally behind them in terms of providing whatever necessary logistical and financial support to it. Jones says that efforts are being made by the National Sports Commission to get sporting bodies and groups involved with this effort. The Long Tennis Association would have made submission. Um, but thus far, the Table Tennis Association went forward ahead and government support through the Ghana Olympic Association, we have already acquired uh, 96 table tennis that are presently in the country that will be distributed to all 10 regions to the schools in those areas. Government is pursuing the formal integration of sports into school curriculum. Minister within the Ministry of Education, Nicolette Henry, says that government intends to have coaches working along with the schools. This will be complemented by the ground enhancement project aimed at restoring grounds and play fields countrywide. Renette LaFleur for the Government News Brief. The Premier Flag Raising Ceremony to mark the 50th Independence Anniversary will be held at the Durban Park this evening. Persons are asked to be seated early before the start of the proceedings at 8 p.m. The gala celebrations will feature cultural presentation, military displays, universal prayers and the raising of the golden arrowhead along with a fireworks display. Similar ceremonies will be held in all the various regions across Guyana. Prime Minister Moses Nagamutu addressed hundreds of Barbicians gathered on the lawns of State House, New Amsterdam this morning when he participated in Region 6 flag-raising ceremony. 
He asked that respect be given to independence pioneers and urged that everyone comes on board to further develop Guyana. I believe that all of our political leaders, all of our political parties, they deserve to be commended for the role they played to bring us this far. And if we are to move forward, more than ever, we need every hand on the deck. As I refer to the Guyana ship, we need all hands on the paddle. We can't look at which paddle is red and which is yellow and which is green. We have to look at the Guyana paddle. And we have to play like the Guyana team. We have to bat for Guyana. We have to bowl for Guyana. We have to run for Guyana. And above all, we must win for Guyana. Minister of Public Health Dr. George Norton at the flag raising ceremony held in Fort Wellington urged attendees to be proud of the country's achievements over the years. Tomorrow, Guyana will celebrate 50 years as an independent nation. This is an achievement which could not have been possible if it were not for the struggles of those who came before us. We cannot forget that period of slavery. Nor could we ever try to forget about the time of indentured laborers. The public health minister charged those gathered to live up to the national motto at all times by living in love and unity. He opined that it is only through unity that Guyanese can see greater equality and prosperity. Minister of Public Infrastructure David Patterson was in Region 2 for the flag-raising ceremony at the Anna Regina Fire Station. The minister resolved to see the region flourish. The people of Essequibo have felt neglected for too long. But today, as we prepare to usher in 50 years of independence, I declare that Essequibo will earn the respect and the prestige it so deserves from this government. The minister pledged that over the next 50 years, Essequibo will see development through focus on issues such as improved infrastructure, youth, education, health, and the development of information communications technology. Meanwhile, Attorney General and Minister of Legal Affairs Basil Williams was at Region 4 flag-raising ceremony where he urged the gathering to reflect on how far Guyana has come as a nation. If we examine our journey over the last 50 years, we can see that this year, 2016, is truly Guyana's year of Jubilee. Yeah, 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 yeah. We are now in our season of restoration and the AP and UAFC coalition government and hopefully together with the members of the opposition will ensure that we restore the good life to each and every Guyanese. All the events were addressed by the respective regional chairpersons, regional executive officers, and mayor. The attendees were treated to a rich cultural program which included dances, songs, dramatic poems, and African and Tassa drumming. That concludes today's edition of the Government News Brief. The details of these and other stories can be found on Gina's website. We encourage you to subscribe to our website and YouTube channel. You can also like and follow us on Facebook to be updated as the news unfolds. Remember, we are just hours away from our Independence Jubilee celebrations. Stay connected to Gina as we bring you updates on the activities for this grand celebration. Do join us again tomorrow for another edition of the Government News Brief. Thank you for watching.